PBS Radio Mystery Theater presents... Come in. Welcome. I'm E.G. Marshall. Do you believe in predestination? Are you convinced, as many people are, that the real science of the stars is not astronomy, but astrology? And even if you are not wholly persuaded, do you find that you turn by habit to glance at the daily horoscope in your favorite newspaper? Supposing, just supposing, that like Amanda Amherst, sole owner of a chain of newspapers from coast to coast, left to her by her famous husband, that you turned to Ethel Nixon's astrological column for the day and read the following. Scorpio, this is a bad day for you. Your sudden death is imminent. Be sure to put all your affairs in order. You cannot escape the inevitability of the stars. It is a hard prediction to face, but it can only be justified out of what you've done to deserve it. Damn, are they out of their minds? That shaky little mouse, Ethel. Writing a bomb like this, she'll have scared 25,000 people out of their wits. Or made us a laughing stock. Uh, this is Amanda Amherst. Put me through to the managing editor. Oh, come on, come on. Adam, it's Amanda. I want the presses stopped. Hold all deliveries and do everything you can to get our first run off the stands. Why? Just read Ethel Nixon's column for today and you'll see. I'm on my way down there now, and when I find out what's going on, heads are going to roll, and brother, none of them will be mine. Our mystery drama, Death in the Stars, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Ian Martin and stars Kim Hunter. It is sponsored in part by Buick Motor Division and Contact, the 12-hour cold capsule. I'll be back shortly with Act One. Amanda Amherst. Before her marriage to Ralph Amherst, Amanda Hale, the country's most beautiful model... A reigning beauty then, a reigning beauty now, a woman who defies the encroachment of age, a woman who controls an empire and everyone under her sway, who wears a velvet glove so that few are conscious of the iron hand. Amanda Amherst, the grieving widow who has never remarried, complex, adorable, kind, generous, difficult, and evil. A woman, perhaps, only her daughter, timid, retiring Nancy, knows completely. I've hated my mother ever since I was seven. For 13 years, I have wanted her dead. But I've been scared of her, too. So all I could do was sanitize. I'll never forget the morning a famous horoscope turned up. Not that I ever saw it with my own eyes. Actually, I didn't know what the fuss was all about. I was just scared because of my own clumsiness and thanking my lucky stars I'd had time enough not to get my head beat in. The way things were between Mother and me by that point, I I just couldn't have taken it. I just slipped back into the apartment in time as it was because she was screaming for me. Nancy! Nancy! Yes, 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 Mother? Did you see my copy of the Post-Journal? Oh, you have it. Well, I just wanted to glance at the headline. Give it to me. Did you also check Ethel Nixon's predictions? Oh, you know I don't believe in that stuff. No, I didn't. But why? That mousy little nobody presented me with a real shocker under my astrological sign this morning. The gist of it was that I marked for death at any moment. What? Oh, you don't believe that, Mother? Of course I don't. I think it's someone's idea of a macabre joke. I might have thought you were the culprit, except as much as you despise and hate me, you haven't the temperament or the know-how. I'm not so sure of your boyfriend, Adam, however. 
He's not my boyfriend anymore. You took care of that. Look, I don't intend to quarrel with you. I have enough to do to pin down who this practical joker is who is going to bring a sizable portion of our circulation down about our ears. What do you mean? Nancy, naturally, I was not named specifically. It just said that anyone born under the sign of Scorpio was marked for imminent death. It'll be the laughing stock of the trade. Lord knows what suits, letters, threats will follow. I've got to get down there right away. I, I, I just can't believe Ethel is responsible for this. And once I satisfy myself of that, I'll find the real culprit. And whoever it is had better be warned. I'm going to crush them like a bug under my heel. That is my mother as she really is. A side very few people see. And when they do, she is a master, or should I say mistress, of covering up. Oh, she did it with me about my father. Even though I heard what I heard with my own ears. But a seven-year-old half drugged in an early morning sleep is easily persuaded she didn't really hear. Amanda, when she sets herself to it, can make purple seem green or orange blue. Even though I remember every word, she twisted them to mean something else. This is what I thought I heard. Even after 13 years, the words just won't go away. And how anyone as beautiful and vibrantly alive as you are outside can be as cold and heartless inside, I... A man... No, never again. I tried to satisfy you once. I'm sorry it turned out to be a girl. I'm sorry I gave you Nancy. Heaven knows I didn't want her. And neither did you, Ralph. That is not true. Of course it is. A boy's all you wanted. The male succession must be preserved to keep the empire alive. Well, if you want a son, go find some other wife to produce him for you. You don't mean that. Oh, don't I? I'm not ruining my figure again for anything. Well, how could you even suggest the possibility of divorce between oh, my us? My dear I... Ralph, who even mentioned divorce? Oh, I don't want a, an illegitimate son. Well, if you handle it right, and if it, if it matters in this day and age, who has to know? You just sit by quietly and see me have a, uh, uh, an affair with some other woman you'd condone that? Well, why not? It doesn't have to be done in front of me. You'd pay her enough, and I'd never have to know. You wouldn't be jealous? You wouldn't even care? Oh, come on. We're not children. If you're squeamish about it, you could arrange it with test tubes or however you do it. It doesn't matter to me. I'm only trying to give you what you want. What I want from you is love and understanding. Well, you have that. I thought I had... Now I see how mistaken I was. But you're not mistaken. I love you very much. Oh, Amanda, you love me for my money, my position. And your power, yes. That I love most of all. But not me. Ralph, I'm tired. I want to get my sleep. Oh, your beauty sleep, of course. You don't want me to remain beautiful and young for you? Amanda, you will always, forever, and as long as I live, remain the most beautiful woman in the world for me. <laughs> Don't you believe it. Beauty is natural only a short while, and then it becomes art. No artists. I don't suppose you're going to understand what I have to say. But up until a very short time ago, I thought I was a man with everything. You are, dearest. I am a man with nothing. Amanda. What does that mean? Just because I won't go through another nine months of being sick and ugly on the chance I'll provide you with a male offspring. If you love me, you wouldn't. Bearing children has nothing to do with love. If you love me, it could have. If you want the child, our child. I don't need your image, Ralph. I have you. Oh, as long as I live, you'll always have me. Now, what does that peculiar tone of voice and tragic inflection mean to suggest? That you don't love me. And I see now that you never really did. Oh, don't be ridiculous. Oh, no. No. I don't intend to be anymore. 
I lay there shivering in bed. I loved my father so much. And I didn't see how mother, whom I loved just as much, could hurt him like that. And then suddenly I was crying, crying until I couldn't stop, just, just bawling like a baby. And so mother was there holding me in her arms and soothing me and washing away the hurt. I thought. Except that all she was saying was lies, oh, lies, oh, lies. my baby. You just didn't understand. Why should you, a little seven-year-old? Don't you know I'd do anything for your father? That I love him just as much as you. But you see... Look, it's hard to explain, dear. You're my one baby. And you're all I want. Don't you ever think that I don't? And you never... I tell you, you never heard me say anything else. had found what I wanted to think deeply. And flying a plane gave me enough aloneness to find out whose perspective was right or wrong. I suppose being brought up as William Manor's son spoiled life for me by giving me everything on a silver platter. Then when I took over the colossus of newspapers, radio and TV stations, the apartments in Paris and London, the townhouse in New York and the great mansion on the Monterey Peninsula, the endless bank accounts. I, I never had to want for anything. But Amanda Blake came along. And then she mattered more to me than anything in life. Until the other thing came up. The sun. An air. For once it seemed I was on the losing you get this number? It's unlisted. I sort of work for him. I, I mean, is this Mrs. Amherst? Yes. Oh, gee, I, I hope I didn't wake you up. Oh, no, no, of course not. I'm always awake and at my best at 6.15 a.m. Who is this? Oh, well, this is Ethel Nixon, the astrologer, you know. The what? The voice of your tomorrow. It's my column, syndicated in your husband's newspapers, you know. And I want it. I've simply got to speak to Mr. Amherst. I mean, your husband. Well, is... I, I suppose I can take a message for him. Can you get it to him quickly? Just beg him not to take any airplane flights in the next two days. Well, I don't think he's planned to. But why? I... Oh, it would be so complex to explain. He's a Taurus, as I'm sure you know. And a frightening set of coats. Are arising through his ruling house and the ascendancy of his particular star. Oh dear, I, it's much too complicated to explain, but he's in terrible danger. That's why I called. In danger? From what? I don't understand. Oh, of course it would be difficult for you, but it is absolutely vital for him not to move out of his own element. Certainly, of all things, not to be in the air or well, why not? Because it has been revealed to me that it can be disaster for him. many reasons, not the least of which was his brother Joseph's reaction. I want to cry out and ask for a god with some justice. Oh, stop being melodramatic, Joe. That's not going to help anything. Oh, you can sit calmly by. You, you, you have nothing to worry about. For God's sake, I just lost my husband. Sure, and gained an empire. I can't believe it. My own brother, he left you everything. That isn't true. 
You still have your editor's job on the journal world. And a tax-free income that should more than keep you in liquor and women. To name a spade a spade. You criticize my lifestyle? What about you? You're worse. At least they give satisfaction in return for the money. I swear I'll die because of you. Oh, you're drunk. I don't know what you're saying. Well, I'm drunk enough to say what I have to say. You killed Ralph. You're his murderer. That's a contemptible thing to say. The man I love... All you ever loved was what he represented, and you wanted it all for yourself, and now you've got it. Look, Ralph died in a plane, actually. All right. But there was nothing wrong with that plane. You... You betrayed him somehow, some way. I don't know how... There's only one way my brother could have died on his plane. Either somebody booby-trapped it or he crashed it deliberately. He wanted to die. Get out. Get out of my house. He destroyed me for a little. That drunken, weakening brother, Joe. To dare to talk about Ralph and me like that. But he disappeared to Europe and out of my mind. What had shaken me most about Ralph's death was Ethel Nixon. How could she have known about Ralph before he... How could she have known? That's why, 13 years later, today, reading her prediction in my own newspaper, I, I could feel the shadow of death across my path. I was conditioned to believe that my doom had been sealed. Unless... Some way, somehow. It, it, it was only someone's idea of a joke. Is there an escape for Amanda Amherst? Is her fate sealed already? Do the stars, wheeling in the heavens, fixed for that infinitesimal moment in time when we, as infants, first cry out that we are alive and born control another fleeting moment of conjunction which brings us death. I'll return shortly with Act Two. For 13 years, Mrs. Ralph Amherst has been one of the great legends of her time. After her husband's death, Amanda has ruled with an iron hand the empire willed to her and miraculously, at least in appearance, kept her youth and her radiant beauty. She has been supremely secure in her power until shortly before the stunning public announcement in her own key paper that her days were numbered. But who or what was responsible for it? How did it appear? Oh, but you couldn't. You surely couldn't believe for one minute, Mrs. Amherst, that I would ever reveal such a terrible prediction about anyone, particularly about you, even if it were true. You did once about my husband, Miss Nixon, and that was true. But that was different. In the first place, I had read it in his horoscope. You haven't read it in mine? Well, look, I'll show you. I can show you a copy of today's paper. Just two pages after the editorial. Yeah. Yeah, see? You can read it for yourself. Let me see. Scorpio, today may be a disturbing day, but keep your head and be of good heart. Keep family affairs in order, check your impulse to emotion, and all will turn out well. Financially, you will benefit greatly. Oh, you see? This is a city edition. Have a look at mine. The early one. Uh, is this the one you read over the phone? Yes. It just seems impossible. <gasps> what? Well, you see? No wonder you gasp. But this... This is the same as you just read. What I wrote to be published. What? Give me that. Damn it, you're right. Someone's up to jokes and games around here, and when I find out who... Well, now, maybe you were... Well, you know, half asleep, and it was sort of a dream. Look, uh, wait a minute. This isn't my paper. The one I read this morning. How do you know? Ethel, try not to be any more of a pinbrain than you are. 
My copy is rushed to me as publisher, delivered by hand the moment it's off the press. Well, then how? I don't know. But I have a couple of ideas. Starting with my not-so-loving daughter, Nancy. I'd better get home and see her right away. <laughs> I just want to know what you're up to, Nancy. What you're trying to prove. I'm not trying to prove anything, Mother. You admit you switched newspapers on me this morning. I didn't switch them. I told you what happened. Oh, a nice little cock and bull story about spilling coffee and cream over the paper and dumping it into the garbage and tearing downstairs to the drugstore to get a fresh copy. Oh, really, you can do better than that. But it's the truth. Why all the fuss about a little coffee spilled on the morning newspaper? Look, I knew the paper was important to you somehow. I could hear you screaming in the study about something wrong. And you were coming right in to straighten it up. And I... Well, well one edition of a paper is just like another one, isn't it? Except when someone like me is shaky and stupid enough to get it all gummed up with coffee, I just... Oh, I just couldn't stand having you on me again, Mother. Not these days. On you? Oh, you know what I mean. I'm so strong out, I just hoped I could avoid any kind of another run-in with you. Strong out? <sighs> Look, uh, have you and Adam up to some crazy scheme to... What should I say? To get back at me for what wasn't my fault? You can be damn well sure that Adam and I are not up to anything. You successfully squashed did you two somehow gimmick that slug in the astrology column this morning? I don't know what you're talking about. Uh, don't lie to me. I want to know if you two have cooked up some scheme to try to... to drive me crazy. That was a special paper this morning, and that horoscope was only for me. How did you manage it? I think you are crazy. Well, how do I know how newspapers are made? Well, the man you tried to steal from me does. You mean the man you spoiled for me? The one I love? Oh, no. Adam may take his women as they come and they go, but he wouldn't go in for any cheap, scare stuff. As managing editor, he's the only one who has the power and the ability and the access to do it. Or one other person. Who? God. Have you thought about him? Don't you think that someday he's going to punish you for what you did to my father? I was sorry the moment the words were out of my mouth. Looking at Amanda's face suddenly go gray and old. And then... And then I wasn't sorry. And quickly it was serene and beautiful again. And I remembered what I had lost and how she had taken him away from me. Oh, and then it was easy to hate again. A terrible thing to look into a daughter's eyes. And know that hidden behind the blank, polite stare is the dagger stroke of hate. If I deserved it, I might be able to accept it somehow. But since she's been seven years old, I've been mother and father to this child. In my own way. And then to have her turn on me and steal... I was never a woman who could live without men. But I never had to depend on them until the day I met Adam Brock. I don't know, it was at someone's place at the beach on a weekend. On a weekend I was able to go out again. Dr. Anton Driscoll had performed his third miracle on me. In bronze and sun -breezed. I knew, even to my own critical eye, that I looked at least 15 years below my own age. I was sure of it when Adam dropped down on the sand beside me. Hello, whoever you are. Likewise, whoever you are. Adam Brock. Look, if I tell you what I do, will you sneer or find I'm beneath your notice? Well, you're dealing and I'm lying down. You can't be beneath my notice. Why don't you give it a try? Well, uh, I'm a newspaper man. I I write. And you? Oh, uh, just a decor for the weekend. 
Our host likes an attractive layout. Yeah, look, I really don't like smart talk. I'll level. You are magnificent. Any man would make a pass at you. I'm not so special. May I? What sort of pass? The simplest and most honest. Dinner? Dancing, maybe? I have a small boat. We could sail. Uh, by daylight. I'm here for two weeks' vacation. How much of it will you let me spend with you? Oh, I don't know. Um, let's start with a sail tomorrow morning. And see how far that takes us. Well, it took us pretty far. By the time we tied up at the dock, Adam was in love with what he thought I was. I was in love with a man I should have met when... Oh, well, when I was young enough for him. And I didn't want to lose him yet, so I, uh, I used my maiden name. And I pulled strings behind the scenes to get him an editorship at the Post Journal. I also made sure that anyone who knew anything about our relationship kept his mouth tightly shut about how, why, or who his sponsor was. Our affair continued in New York until... Until Nancy took it into her head to take literal French leave from Paris and the Sorbonne. Hello, this is Mr. Brock. Uh, oh, no, my secretary's out for the moment. I'm picking up. Huh? What? A daughter? Oh, well, sure. Send her in. Uh, should I come out and get her? Oh, she's on her way in already. Okay. No, 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 it's fine. I get along with kids fine. I, I guess I can handle this one. Uh, what's her name? Oh, I, I, I guess she's here. Uh, come in. Well, Nancy? I, I, I didn't expect a little girl like you to come and visit me. Oh, you're the new managing editor of the Post Journal. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I guess I am. Uh, uh, and, and you, you're Amanda's daughter. That's right, all of me. Oh, it's a, it's a pretty nice all. Oh, I'm not that good. I mean, I don't buzz these vibrations right off the bat, normally. Uh, me either. You'd be surprised how surprised I am. You uh, wouldn't know about me, I guess. You are Amanda's daughter. If you mean, did I spring from her womb? Yes. Oh, is, uh, is Mother around? No, no, she's on business in Chicago. Where did you turn up from? Oh, I just got in from Paris. And I'm flat broke and I'm hungry. Well, I can take care of the last one. <laughs> it's lunchtime anyway. Let, let's go to Cheerios. I'll feed you. Feel better? Oh, I feel... Oh, I hate to tell you how good I feel. You fed me all right. <laughs> I'm glad you enjoyed it. Oh, the food was great. But that doesn't matter. I mean, the line you fed me. I just... I just hope you meant it. I didn't think I was feeding you a line. Oh, if you could have searched through Bartlett's for the perfect quotes you had them, Adam. And then after knowing you all this long, why should I expect less? By the time we got to the Spumoni, I was his forever. He was the first thing that ever happened to me since dim childhood memories that gave me a lust for life. I was in love. I knew just what I wanted. And the best part of it was I could feel he felt the same. Well, it didn't take Mother long to clobber me. And since I put the bills, I think I at least deserve some notice when you decide to run out on your responsibilities. Mother, I had had Europe up to here. I wanted home. All right. So I let you dump Europe. And I gave you back your green pastures. All I ask is you to stay out of mine. Maybe I'm dumb, Mother, but I'll, I'll sell it out. To... Just leave any mail I have staked out alone. What? You heard me. Lay off Adam. Adam? But he's young enough to never mind. mind his age. He's what I want. Adam's been mine for months, Nancy. My, well, what shall I say? Uh, escort. Day and night. Bought and paid for. 
You want to buy used merchandise, Nancy? Particularly one of my second-hand lovers. I knew Adam wasn't mine anymore. My daughter had stolen him from me with the one weapon I didn't possess. Her youth. But if I couldn't have him, she couldn't. Nobody could. A strange and tortuous story about a strange and tortuous woman. What is her true fate? Is she at last caught in her own web, her past catching up with her to doom her as inexorably as she has sealed the fate of others? There is still more of the past to come when I return shortly with Act Three. Amanda Amherst, seemingly ageless, wielder of a kind of total power over the destiny of others. Amanda Amherst, a throwback to the feudal queens and kings, absolute and impregnable. Is there any force that can topple this woman from her throne? Was the mysterious prediction that began this story valid in any way, supernatural, or natural. Let's go back to Amanda to find out. After Nancy told me the truth, I decided to take the bull by the horn. I went to Adam's office. I told him not to announce me. I just walked in. Good morning, Adam. Oh, Amanda. <laughs> or perhaps now I know just exactly who you are. I should say Mrs. Amherst. Don't be a child. I just recently discovered, where you and I are concerned, that that's approximately what I am. And that's a little below the belt. And there isn't all that difference in years. Well, there has to be, if Nancy really is your daughter. Oh, she is all right. Well, what's the matter with her? She won't, won't answer my phone calls. That, that butler and those two hulking footmen or our bodyguards or whatever they are bar the door like the Secret Service. And I'm informed in no uncertain terms that I am not welcome. And she doesn't want to see me ever again. Now, I want to know what's happened. Well, you might have tried calling me to find out. I thought you were still in Chicago. Look, uh, what were you afraid of, Adam? That I'd cut you off at the knees, take away your nice job. Damn you! Is that what you threatened Nancy with? I didn't threaten Nancy with anything. I simply told her the truth. What? That she'd be making a mistake in marrying you. Well... <laughs> Does this mean I'm fired? Oh, only from one occupation, Adam. As a managing editor, I still find you perfectly satisfactory. And Nancy? I'll let you answer that question yourself. I'm quite sure she'll never let you near her again. The one good thing, perhaps, I've ever done for her. I could kill you for that. You haven't the nerve, Adam. Nancy's better off without you. It was in Nancy's best interests, I told myself. He'd only have hurt her in the end. As for me, there wasn't any way he could hurt me, I thought. Till that horoscope. Try as I would, I couldn't deny it had shaken me. And I held him responsible. Till Ethel Nixon sprang a new surprise on me. It began when Ethel received a visit one morning. Come in. Hello, Ethel. No. Oh, it can't be. Oh, but it is. Joseph Amherst. The little change inside, but in, in the flesh. Oh, I can't believe it. Oh, it's so good to see you. If I hadn't cast a horoscope of you, I'd have almost thought... That I'd died? <laughs> I no. Oh, I tried pretty hard to, but didn't quite make it. And so the prodigal returned. And looking well and fit. That's due to grazing in your fields for many years now. I beg your pardon? When my brother died and my temporal world collapsed because of that and other things, I went... I went looking. Looking for what? 
Oh, revenge? I thought at first a way to avenge my brother. Oh, but your brother died in an airplane crash. That was no one's fault except... Except what? Accident. His own fate. Or a wife that drove him to it. Mr. Amherst, you're scaring me now. I can't believe what you're saying. You must know that I believe in fate, not human intervention. Oh, that's all right, Ethel. It's what in the last few years in the Far East I have come to believe in, too. How long have you been back in this country? Oh, a week or so. Does Mrs. Amherst know you're there? Lord, no. As far as I'm concerned, she doesn't exist. And it's a mutual feeling. Mr. Amherst, I... Uh, now, please excuse me for asking, but... If you've been around for a week, you could... You wouldn't be responsible for the awful thing that happened in my column yesterday morning. What awful thing? I'll tell you all about it. You didn't do it somehow, did you, Mr. Ammon? Oh, my dear Ethel. I wouldn't know how. But, uh, who else saw this prediction except Amanda? Well, nobody. But why would she make up a story like that? Who knows why Amanda does anything she does? Maybe to have an excuse to fire whoever is managing editor or... Adam Brock? Oh, he's leaving anyway. Oh, maybe to fire me. Oh, no, I wouldn't worry. I don't think that's the real explanation. I think the only reason Amanda saw what she saw is because the black pigeons are coming home to roost. Do you believe in ESP? Oh, yes, but I... How many people do you think hate Amanda as deeply as I once did? As I still struggle not to do? As I will have to fight with every resource I have not to when I go to visit my brother's grave in Arlington tomorrow? Maybe that's why the ghosts of the past are haunting Amanda. As perhaps they haunt her every year. At this time. Yes? Mrs. Amherst? It's speaking. It's Ethel Nixon. I just felt I had to call you. I thought I ought to let you know he's back. Oh, who's back? What are you talking about? Joseph Amherst. He turned up at my office this morning. Joe. Well, well, my esteemed brother-in-law. I thought he must have died by this time. Did he just get back? No, he... He's been here for a week. And he's been... Well, he said he'd been hanging around the plant. And even though he denies it, I was just wondering... That he's responsible for this ridiculous hoax that's going on? Huh? I wouldn't put it past him. But he really must have lost his mind. Have you seen today's paper? You mean the Post Journal? Of course I mean the Post Journal. Your column again, under Scorpio. I suppose you'll deny that you wrote this impossible gibberish. Well, I read it, and it seemed to make sense. I I'm sorry. If... What does it say in your paper? Well, just what I saw in the stars. Uh, read it to me, you fool. Oh, of course. This is a day of traveling for you and meeting up with old acquaintances. It's a day for gathering up all loose ends and finally solving your main problem. A day of achievement and solution. Oh, that means tomorrow, of course. Just what I thought. Now listen to what mine says. This day will never have dawned for you. Today you will have traveled far and your death and destruction will take place in Vienna. If you have any prayers to make for the hell you have made for others, make them now before you die. And go from Vienna straight to hell. Oh, how terrible. But don't let it worry you. Predictions are not like that. I'm not worried. The whole thing is ludicrous. I'm not going to be in Europe, let alone Vienna, for any reason. In fact, after I get a train to Washington, I'm heading in exactly the opposite direction. West. Into Virginia taking Nancy to visit some of my oldest and dearest friends in Winchester, Virginia. Oh, you, you won't worry, will you? 
I'll tell you what I will worry about. You make sure this is the end of all this idiocy, or I can promise you, Ethel, you and everybody else necessary will be fired until it stops. I don't like being made a fool of. Nancy, are you ready? I'm not going with you, Mother. Now, don't start anything. The Stokeleys are expecting you, and I can't let them know at the last minute. Besides, we've just time to make the plane. Well, you make it. I'm not going. Why? Because I am getting married, Mother. That is why Adam quit the paper. I came to my senses. He didn't know about me when he knew you. And he didn't know you any better than most people do. What's that supposed to mean? Oh, you look beautiful. And most of the time you're careful to appear to be kind and gracious and gentle. But inside you're hard and merciless and evil. All those years you pretended to be the grieving widow... And the careful hints he dropped about my father and other women when all the time he loved only you. And you wouldn't even give him the son he wanted. Oh, I couldn't have had another child after you. That's a lie. I remember back to the night I was seven years old. I always thought I couldn't really have heard the truth. Well, now I know it was the truth. And that my father killed himself because of you. And because of Adam. He almost had me doing that myself. Oh, thank the Lord I woke up in time. And I'm free of you. I'll never see you again. I was livid. The ungrateful little... I almost decided to give up my weekend in Winchester. I was damned if I was going to have my pleasure interfered with. I'd take care of all of them when I returned. I couldn't stop Nancy from marrying... But I'd fix it so that Adam would have to come crawling to me, begging for any job in the newspaper business. I was still fuming, even after the limousine with Stokely had sent to pick me up at Dulles Airport was purring along the road west toward Winchester. I had a sudden thought, remembering for some unearthly reason how close we were to Arlington, and that this was the 13th anniversary of Ralph's death. Let's see, I thought that would be to the south. It was raining, and I rubbed away the condensation to peer out idly, my heart freezing suddenly as the headlights swept the sign by the road saying, you are now entering the town of Vienna. was the last thing she saw or knew. The newspaper story the next day began with a paragraph Mrs. Ralph Amherst on her way to Winchester, Virginia and passing through the small town of Vienna was hit by a car traveling north. Both drivers and Mrs. Amherst were killed. The strangest feature of the accident was that the driver of the other car was her brother-in-law Mr. Joseph Ward Amherst, who was returning to New York after visiting his brother's grave in Arlington, Virginia. I'll be back shortly. Accidental and natural death or foreordained and supernatural We'll never know. The paper with the horoscope in it was burned up with Amanda. Joe was dead, and dead men tell no tales. Perhaps we'll just leave it with the quote Joe started, which we'll finish. Though the mills of God grind slowly, yet they grind exceeding small. Though with patience he stands waiting, with exactness grinds he all. Our cast included Kim Hunter, Paul Hecht, Ian Martin, Rosemary Rice, and Mary Jane Higby. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. 
And now, a preview of our next tale. Hugh, what are we doing? What is it? It's all over now. It's gone. Let's see what happens. Yeah. Oh, no. That poor, poor Sandy. Just look at him. Ripped to pieces. As if he'd run into the blades of a, 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 of a threshing machine. But what did it? The thing. The damn thing. The what? That's what I call it. The damn thing. First, it did away with my chickens, and then the pigs and the cattle. And now poor Sandy slashed to pieces. And that's not the end. Only the good Lord knows what the damn thing will destroy next. 